Professor Reed from the Primary Healthcare Directorate at UCT and I want to uh, tell you about a case study of a child who was admitted to the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at Red Cross Hospital um, sometime in 2011 and it's part of a study where we looked at over 200 children who were admitted to the intensive care unit and all the steps that it took for them to actually end up in the ICU. So these were obviously very sick children at the end of this process, but we looked back to the beginning of the illness at the home and family uh, uh, environment in which the child started to get ill. So this is one such story. On Monday the 19th of December, the mother left home to go and prepare for the burial of her 23-year-old son. She asked someone to look after Bongani, who was the small child, as she was busy with funeral arrangements. When she came back in the afternoon, at 6 p.m., she noticed Bongani had a running stomach, but it wasn't serious, and she left him again with this lady on the Tuesday, but told her that she must not give him milk. She prepared a bottle of salt with sugar before she left, so she had some of the... Uh, uh, health education that had been given. On Monday night no medication was given to the child and when she came back from the funeral on Tuesday at 4 p.m. she noticed he was still having a running stomach but it wasn't loose and she noticed his bottle had not been sterilized properly. She also noticed he wanted to sleep but the person who was looking after him said he just woke up. She gave him water as he was thirsty and he was now crying a lot. Um, he was also given, she noticed, spicy food during the day and at night he struggled to sleep because he was vomiting and the mother had to change the pillowcases. At 8 o'clock the next morning, the mother noticed that Bungani was very pale. So on the 21st of December she decided to go to the chemist and buy medication because she was still tired for them from the funeral and she told herself she can't go and wait the whole day at the, at the, day, at the day clinic. She was seen by the pharmacist, uh, who didn't give them anything, but wrote a letter because she told them that Bongani was very serious and must go to a doctor, uh, which is just around the corner, two minutes away from the chemist. They were seen by the doctor within five minutes after she had paid. This is a GP, and the mother was allowed to be with the child throughout. The doctor gave them three bottles and told them to give the child medicine three times a day with weak tea because the medication had enough glucose in it. But the child continued vomiting and at 6 p.m. the mother rushed to the same doctor to get a referral letter but they were closed already. So she went across the road to emergency uh, and that's at the CHC and was seen immediately at 6.20 p.m. The doctors at the CHC put a drip on the child immediately after seeing as she said, that his eyes were turning. They were taken by a neighbor uh, in a car and they charged them 50 rand. <clears throat> when she got to, to the CHC, the security tried to stop her, but she told him that this was an emergency and forced her way inside and was seen immediately. The nurses then tried to stop her, but the doctor told her to put the child on the bed. At the CHC, the mother was present when they were put the drip on the child, but after that she was told to go and open a folder for Bongani. When she came back, she asked the doctors if she could take off his socks and make him comfortable. But after she had done that, she was asked to go and sit in the waiting room. She wanted to be there throughout. She also said the doctors at the CHC do not like to have more than one emergency at a time. They said, we don't need any more of these problems. The private doctor didn't know what was wrong with the child. At the CHC they were speculating. One, said, one doctor said it could be gastro and another suspected diabetes. Another doctor said the sound of the chest was not right. At Red Cross she was eventually told it was pneumonia. The ambulance was already at the hospital but they had to wait while the doctor was trying to stabilize the baby first. When they got inside the ambulance, it, was, it did not move until the mother asked, Why don't we go? The paramedics told her that they were waiting for another child 
which the doctors were busy with. The doctors told the paramedics to go because Bongani needed to be admitted to ICU. They did, the paramedics didn't want to do two trips, according to the mother, until the doctor forced them to go and come back for the other child. Bongani had a drip and another machine to monitor his heart. This is in the mother's own words. The ambulance waited for 15 minutes with Bongani inside until the doctors forced them to leave. She thinks they left after, just after 8 p.m. She said when she asked questions of the paramedics, they told her that they know what they are doing. She also said when you ask questions, they make you feel like a criminal. She said when they went to Medridge and were taken to trauma, the child was stabilized. At trauma, the mother was told that they're not sure about the pneumonia, they'd have to do further tests in the ICU. And that's when the child reached the pediatric ICU. At Red Cross, the mother was allowed to be next to her baby throughout the process. At Red Cross, a new drip was put on the child. And the mother was asked if she had tested for HIV. She said yes, and it was negative. They asked if they could test the child again, and she agreed, and she's still waiting for the results. So this little story gives you some idea of the trials and tribulations of actually making it through the system with a very sick child, what turned out to be uh, a fortunate and positive result, the child recovered well, but it's not as easy as it first seems.